You're listening to Book Insights, brought to you by Memoed, finding and simplifying the world's most powerful ideas to fit into your lifestyle. Each episode is a deep dive into a nonfiction bestseller that can change your life or make you think. In around 30 minutes, you'll learn all about a book that offers wisdom for your life, career, or business. So get ready to live and work smarter, better, and happier with Book Insights. I think, therefore I am. Since the 17th century, Descartes' famous axiom has informed Western thinking's understanding of self. Our very existence depends on our minds and our ability to think, to plan and to interpret. But what if there is another way of looking at consciousness, a way that could change the way we think and feel about the world around us, for the better? A way that could lead to improved relationships and greater happiness? For Eckhart Tolle, that way is found in releasing ourselves from our minds, our egos, and connecting to the present. The power of the present moment, when we focus our concentration on the now and simply notice the world around us without giving judgment, without identifying any separation between self and our surroundings, is a transformative tool which we can use to connect with a deeper reality. In his global bestseller, The Power of Now, Tolle shows us exactly how to find that tool within ourselves. Born in 1948 as Ulrich Leonard Tolle, Tolle describes his childhood growing up in post-war Germany as anxious and unhappy. When he was 13, he moved with his father to Spain, where Tolle was homeschooled in literature, astronomy and languages. Tolle lived in a dark world, filled with negativity. He was unable to enjoy the present moment and had bouts of crippling depression. One night, everything changed. Shortly after his 29th birthday, Tolle woke up in the middle of the night with a hatred of the world, seeing it as hostile and completely meaningless. In the centre of this hatred and meaninglessness was himself, and he longed for an end to it all. Tolle kept thinking, I cannot live with myself any longer. That's when his epiphany came. Tolle suddenly realised that his depression, his fear, his perceived lack of goodness were all a complete illusion. He reasoned, if I cannot live with myself, there must be two of me, the I and the self, that I cannot live with. Maybe, he thought, only one of them is real. Tolle felt himself being sucked into an internal void, a world away from the pain and hatred that he was in only moments before. The void was so intense that it shook his whole body, a frightening experience, but one that, rather than resisting, he surrendered to. Tolle passed out and awoke the next morning to realise the beauty of the world, the sweet sounds of the birds, the glorious dawn sunlight which shone through the curtains. Seeing the light, Tolle was in complete awe. He understood that there is infinitely more to life than we realise, and as he looked around him, everything in his room seemed fresh and alive, in a way that he had never experienced before. Tolle lived for months afterwards in a state of uninterrupted bliss. He changed his name to Eckhart, in homage to the 13th century German Neoplatonist leader Meister Eckhart, and decided to dedicate his life to teaching others about the healing power of now. The Power of Now is not simply a self-help guide, but it is a life-changing book which contains incredible spiritual knowledge, offering an enlightened perspective on our modern society. It explains why we fear, hate and love, and how we can move to unconditional love and true inner peace. The beauty of the power of now is its simplicity. It can be achieved anywhere, at any time, simply by being in the present moment. Toller isn't asking you to change yourself, but simply to watch yourself without judgment. In this book Insight, we will look at three key areas. One, deep insight. What is the power of now? Why is it so important? Two, how to practice the power of now. How can we be in the present moment? What stops us from connecting with the present moment? Three, the wider implications. How can the power of now help us in our daily life? What impact might it have on society? What is the power of now? The power of now is simply the means to hold your concentration on the present moment. Think of it as watching your mind while it juggles through a maze of distractions, thoughts, emotions, scenarios and preconceptions. It is a way to bring an end to incessant thinking and worrying, 
and a way to shut off the voices in your head that create anxiety and fear. On a deeper level, the power of now allows us to actually exist in a different way. When we connect to the now, we are able to find our true nature, beyond name and form. When we are unable to experience this connectedness, we can feel separated from ourselves and from the world around us. Here is Tolle himself on his YouTube channel. The power of now is also the power of you. Not the personal you, but the you that is rem that remains and never was not connected and always is connected and always is an intrinsic part of universal power itself, universal consciousness itself, the one consciousness that underlies all phenomena. When we are completely present, we connect to our being, the ever-present one life beyond the myriad forms of life that are subject to birth and death. Connecting with our being means connecting with something that is beyond any kind of separation. It is wholeness and fulfillment. This is not simply an emotion, but a state of higher consciousness. It could be described as God, but because of our modern preconceptions and use of labels, this makes it seem like a thing that exists. Instead, Tolle uses being to describe a happening that simply exists in and of itself. Being exists eternally, unattached to time, and therefore transcends life and death. When we access the power of now, we can focus our attention on what is happening both inside and outside ourselves. This means that our construct of things like shape, language, life and death are no longer the focus of our being. We can transcend them. Tolle makes a distinction between being and mind. Picture the statue, the thinker, by the French sculptor Auguste Rodin. A man is bent over his knee, literally lost in thought. It represents everything that Tolle is trying to separate us from. Tolle describes this as mind. Our minds create tension and resistance within us. When we feel inadequate or unworthy or any other negative thoughts, they are created by and in our minds. When we let go of the thinker within, we connect with being. In this state of consciousness, our mind, which is a merry-go-round of internal monologues, judgments, speculations, comparisons, likes and dislikes, simply dissolves. Let's take a break. When we return, we'll continue our deep dive into Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. We'll take a look at why being present is vital to overcoming suffering. Then we'll learn how to practice the power of now. Enjoying this episode of Book Insights? If so, keep listening and learning. There's a collection of over 100 titles you can read or listen to now at memodapp.com slash insights. That's M-E-M-O-D-A-P-P dot com slash insights. We're continuing our exploration into spiritual teacher and author Eckhart Tolle's bestseller, The Power of Now. Our minds create a feeling of separation through believing and identifying with both our own and society's preconceptions, judgments and beliefs. We do this every day, and we do it unconsciously. Suffering is created when we build our identities by believing what comes into our minds and strive to conform to the pressures that these beliefs put us under. For example, you might have a good job with enough money to live, but if you start believing that someone with a bigger house and greater wealth is more successful than you, then your own job seems less valuable and you feel less happy. In this case, you don't have to listen to these thoughts. They are an illusion. This is our ego at play. For Tolle, our ego is a product of mind, which creates the anger and unhappiness that we feel every day. He makes a distinction between mind, where our ego lives, and consciousness, where there's no ego, because we are non-judgmentally watching our mind. Whenever you become involved in an argument, if you identify with the anger in the moment, in other words, become angry, you are identifying with mind, and you will attack the other person on the grounds that you are right and they are wrong. But the idea that you are right in an argument is another illusion that the mind creates enhancing the feeling of separation and negativity within. There is one more aspect to this. It is one thing to say that our minds create a feeling of separation, and that is what makes us feel alone and unhappy. 
but are we still separate physically? People are different to each other, and humans are different to animals. For Tolle, this is an argument of the mind, which is invested in duality. For example, black and white, right versus wrong, which is the way that most people see the world. But when we are present, when we are fully conscious of our inner thoughts and feelings, while simultaneously conscious of our surroundings, we are filled with the reality of the moment. This allows a deeper awareness to build within us, where we realize the impermanence of our mind objects. Everything we focus on in the external world, whether a person or place, a shape or object, are mind objects that make up the world around us. Thoughts and emotions are mind objects too. Often, people are so distracted by their mind objects that they are unconscious of the inner workings of their own mind. But when in the present moment, it is possible to become conscious of the mind slowing down and stopping. This is the precise moment when mind dissolves into consciousness, meaning that duality has ceased and we are experiencing oneness. Left unchecked, the mind creates negativity, which stays inside us. This is the pain body, an important obstacle to oneness. When we are not in the present moment, our emotional pain gets trapped inside. This becomes a zone of negative energy that occupies mind and body. The pain body wants to survive inside of you. Once overcome by the pain body, you unconsciously want more pain as it takes over your whole being. You want to suffer from pain, or inflict pain, or both. For its own survival, the pain body relies on your unconscious identification with it. But once you acknowledge the cycle of pain, it ceases to exist in you. Here is Tolle on his YouTube channel. You, you have a, a big pain body there, which is not in itself a bad thing, because the pain body becomes a strong motivating force for you to awaken. By being in the present moment, you can dissolve the pain body and be liberated from it. Being present comes naturally to animals and children. From the four agreements to you are a badass, a common theme in personal development books is to look to animals and children for guidance on how to be in the now. Animals and children lack ego, and their attention is almost always focused outwards. Because of the stresses and problems of our modern society, being in the moment is a harder task for adults. But the more you practice, the more you will be aware of the wondrous reality that is the present moment. Here is Tolle once again on his YouTube channel. I'm not promising, I'm not telling you, you will not experience further challenges in life. The difference, however, is as presence arises more and more, you're not transforming the challenges of life into unhappiness and into an unhappy identity. You're not transforming the challenges of life into an unhappy self. Use your senses to notice your surroundings and bring your awareness to your body. Look, don't interpret. Notice light, colors, shade and textures. If your mind distracts you, note the distraction and move back to being present. Listen to the sounds without judgment. If you find yourself judging, notice the judgment and silently move back to being present. This is the process that allows us to access the power of now. Always be conscious of the air coming in and out of your body. Don't chastise yourself if you become distracted. Simply allow yourself to return to being present without self-judgment. And allow the peaceful process of being present to continue. Being present becomes easier, deeper and with fewer distractions the more you practice. The timeless state of the present moment, once activated, allows us to realize a new kind of knowledge. This knowledge is entirely separate from the knowledge we get from the mind. This is a knowing which is one with the world around us, not simply labeling the world around us. There is an important distinction between identification with mind and observation of mind. Identification with mind leaves us distracted and trapped. In contrast, observation of mind allows space after any thought or emotional charge. In the case that you find yourself trapped in the mind, Follow these three steps. 1. Observe the distracting thought. 2. Be aware of any emotion or lack thereof and how it feels in your body. 
and 3. Watch how your mind reacts to this. Is the thought still there? It's crucial when practicing being in the now to not get too caught up in forcing yourself to be present. This will create further stress that will strengthen control of your mind over your present experience. Just remember, whenever you realize you are distracted, you are present. In this moment, there only exists the witnessing presence. This is not of the mind. When we observe our minds, our consciousness is not of it anymore. It is impossible to be unhappy and fully present. Being fully present relies completely on the senses and not on thoughts, whether negative or positive. To think, I am unhappy, is to be trapped in mind. But to simply witness this thought without judgment is entirely different. You realize that your thought is a passing illusion, and this realization is not of the mind. Past and future are concepts of the mind, which don't really exist. Presence is the only reality. We can plan trips for the future and reflect on events of the past, but we will only ever experience these trips, events and moments in the present. The now. As humans, we have an abstract term called our life. Our life is what we build from past and future. This is an illusion. Time is another thing that rules our lives in the modern world. This sort of psychological time fuels the mind to create worry, stress, fear and panic. For example, many people worry about getting old and use the present moment to try to protect their youth through changing their natural appearance. The negativity of the mind is always ultimately caused by a denial of the present moment. Tolle recognizes the problems of form and time as mind objects. He accepts that the time-bound mode of consciousness is deeply embedded in the human psyche. Still, when we see that time is an illusion, we are one step closer to enlightenment. Let's take one final break. When we return, we'll conclude our book insight on Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. We'll consider the wider implication of Tolle's work and briefly review everything we learned. Enjoying this episode of Book Insights? If so, keep listening and learning. There's a collection of over 100 titles you can read or listen to now at memodapp.com slash insights. That's M-E-M-O-D-A-P-P dot com slash insights. We're concluding our book insight on Eckhart Tolle's bestseller, The Power of Now. In this part, we'll consider the wider implications of The Power of Now, briefly recap and look at the book's legacy. By now you can see that being in the present moment has infinite possibilities and has the potential to completely transform the way we think and act. You might be thinking that it's impossible to keep up this practice on a daily basis. After all, we have the work and business of our own lives to attend to. There's simply not enough time to practice being in the now at every single moment. But to worry about not being present enough is in itself worrying. And this is a product of mind. Don't bother yourself with thinking too much. Just allow your presence to build in spare moments that don't require use of your mind. Be present in the mundane moments of everyday life, even accept boredom in these moments. Here is Tolle himself on his YouTube channel. A good practice is not always to feel you have to fill up the present moment with something, but in actually enjoy the present moment that is not filled up with anything. By filling up, I mean external activity or internal activity. Another way that we can be in the present moment is in communication with others. If we are at work, we can practice present communication, noticing how we react internally to others. For example, if you have a colleague or a friend you have been arguing with, be fully present in conversation with them. Listen to them, not with your mind, but with your body. This allows you to not get caught up with your thoughts, but to allow the other person's space to be heard without judgment. Being fully aware in these interactions will make you calmer and less likely to react violently. Tolle explains 
Just as the sun is infinitely brighter than a candle flame, there is infinitely more intelligence in being than in your mind. It is impossible to have an argument with someone who is fully present, since they are connected with the peace of being. They are unattached to the violent and negative emotions of mind. The same is true in romantic relationships. The relationship depends on what one can give to the other, and if the wants and needs of the other are not fulfilled, then negativity and hatred arise. The good news is that this situation can be altered almost immediately by accessing the now and being fully present. If you find yourself arguing with your partner or harboring past resentment, just be present when communicating with them. Be aware of your body as you listen to them. By doing this, you are aware of them as they are, without your judgment in the way. This allows you to connect with your being and allows you to be one with them. This is the beginning of true love. Notice angry thoughts. Notice selfish thoughts. Notice the unhappiness you feel when you feel that your partner is not doing enough for you. Remember, these thoughts are all illusions of the mind. Being present will allow you to notice your mind's thought patterns and ultimately their futility. Realizing this will not only bring a deeper joy for yourself, but will eventually bring fulfillment for your partner, who will feel your positive energy. Once we realize that happiness and unhappiness are effectively two sides of the same coin, and that both are products of the mind, then we can realize a deeper consciousness, like that of a deep lake. Whether windy, stormy, turbulent or calm, the deep lake will still exist. Why is it necessary to realize this potential? Let's take a practical example. If you are caught up in the problems of your mind and someone starts a fight with you for no reason, all likelihood is that you would retaliate in some way out of fear or anger. Even if you don't respond, you will still have negative thoughts long after the moment passes. But if you are fully present and you realize that this person is suffering because of their anger and identification with their own mind and ego, would you react violently? Or would you instead notice their pain and want to share with them your inner knowledge of the power of now, so they too no longer have to suffer? If enough people were to achieve this state of presence, society would become less prone to fear and more compassionate. Our collective reality is largely a symbolic reflection of fear. The point of the power of now is the birth of a new consciousness. A consciousness that simply exists, which doesn't need or want things. A consciousness freed from the egoic mind. There is no fear or loss anymore. When we are present, it is easier to see the commonalities in our fellow human beings. We are all physical beings, subject to mortality. Yet death is a label created by our minds. We believe in death because we have bodies, and our mind identifies with that body. When present in the now, though, it is impossible to feel separation, and therefore you are not limited to your body. You are part of the universe. This means that we, our consciousness, can't die. Death is the grandest illusion. Realizing this oneness with the universe is true transcendence. It is a gift that could transform society. Remember to surrender. This does not mean to give up. At the core of being present, at the core of being, is pure movement and flow of energy. In China, this is often called the Tao. In daily life, we often put up resistance to this flow of energy, but most of us are completely unconscious to this. That is why it is important to surrender to this flow. Yield to your experience rather than oppose it. When we are fully present and we feel an internal resistance, focus on allowing the experience to happen. This is how Tolle himself became enlightened, through finally surrendering and letting go of fear. Surrender allows for spontaneous, positive action, free from any grasping of the mind. Think how life would be, and society, when that happens. A brief recap. The power of now is about the practice of being fully in the present moment, aware of inner murmurings and external surroundings. The point of this is to dissolve the incessant thinking of our mind, which creates fear, anxiety and hatred. 
Even happiness created by the mind is temporary and insufficient for inner peace and enlightenment, which can turn into unhappiness in an instant. Remember, suffering is identification with mind. The mind itself exists out of fear. We examined how the mind uses our thoughts to create fear and anxiety within us. This leads to negative energy becoming trapped within us in what Tolle calls the pain body. Fear and anxiety are what fuel an inner feeling of separation, making us suffer through the feeling of loneliness, anger and despair. This is eliminated by being present and becoming conscious to the workings of our mind. Awareness of being present creates an inner joy and deep happiness as we become one with being. The Power of Now is a global bestseller and has been translated into more than 30 languages since it was published in 1997. Along with The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, Tolle and his works found fame and an international audience after being featured on Oprah Winfrey's eponymous show. Tolle's teachings touch on themes that are pertinent to anyone who has wondered if there is a different way of being, an alternative state of consciousness that might free us from the mind-forged manacles that William Blake so accurately predicted would trap humanity. The power of now has been criticised by other spiritual teachers for using quotes from Christian and Buddhist texts without examining more deeply, or crediting, these other religions' philosophies on consciousness, life and death. Tolle has been accused of a pick-and-mix attitude towards religions, taking only those parts that fit his vision and ignoring the rest. The power of now itself is based on the practice of Buddhist meditation, but Tolle only loosely mentions meditation and the teachings of the Buddha in the book. Tolle and his work have also been criticised for being opaque and esoteric, and dismissed as mumbo-jumbo, most famously by Time magazine. But when millions of people around the world have changed their lives for the better by reading The Power of Now, do any of these criticisms really matter? Ultimately, the proof lies not in intellectual reasoning, but in people being touched by a power higher than themselves. In order to transform your life, it is not enough to simply agree on a cognitive level with the content in the power of now. It must be practiced and lived. Tolle writes that loss of now is loss of being. To be present is to be free of the past and free of the worries of future fulfillment. To be present in the now is to rise above thought and realize that there was never a time when your life was not now, nor will there ever be. Life is now. It's time to live it. Thank you for listening to Book Insights. Check out the rest of our content at memodap.com. Please keep in mind that the information provided in or through our Book Insights episodes is for educational and informational purposes only. It's not intended to be a substitute for advice given by qualified professionals and should not be relied upon to disregard or delay seeking professional advice.